Hi everyone. So for this update on the car, I've just been working on getting the cooling system up and running or making progress towards that. And on the radiator end, I had this manifold type thing welded up. Um, these TIG welds are not my own, but the manifold here has a bunch of ports at the bottom for return lines coming in from the batteries in the motor as well as a barb to connect it up to the top of the radiator. A big hole here for filling and then I'll put a threaded plug in there and then a smaller hole that I'll connect to a surge tank so that it can vent out air and stuff. And then over here, here's the two water pumps mounted to a bracket. This bracket just connects to the battery mounting bracket with a few bolts into Riv nuts. It's got this U-clamp thing to hold on the smaller pump since that doesn't have any mount, real mounting holes and then the bigger pump its mounting holes connect up to the bracket. It's a little tricky to assemble and disassemble because the large pump has the mounting positions just at a weird angle for what I need since I need the output to be facing upwards. And you can see the blue tubing connected to the small pump that goes under the car and into the battery charger slash DC-DC converter. One important discovery was that the, uh, I think that's the volume of the pump can be rotated. So these holes and stuff are all symmetrical. So if you just undo the screws, gently pry off that plastic part, you can clock it in 90 degree increments. So that way the connector sits in a good spot with the output facing down like that. Most of the changes have gone on under the car, so unfortunately I had to abandon my super sturdy uh, Delrin cable mounts just because they didn't hold enough cables. So now I've got this double-decker aluminum plate thing where on this plate I've mounted up the stuff that's roughly one inch in diameter, and then on this other plate here I've got an, just enough space to mount the half inch tubing that's going to cool the rear batteries. So you can see now that holds the two orange high voltage cables as well as the two blue motor cooling tubes. So back here is where the tubing goes into the car. So this tube here comes from the pump up front and goes into the battery charger slash DC-DC converter, which is just behind here in the rear seat. And then this other tube comes out of that module and goes through there and around, kind of around the drive shaft. And then comes back here and connects up to the input of the motor. Uh, there will be more brackets and stuff holding this in place, uh, but this routing is about as good as I could do without having fancy molded tubing or anything like that. Here's where the water comes out of the motor. It just goes through this right angle thing, then the tubing goes underneath the CV joint, and comes back up, and goes back up to the front, where it then connects up to the radiator. I haven't cut it to length yet, so it's still hanging down. I need to add some more brackets up front to hold it up under the car, as well as brackets to run the orange cables, since they kind of rub on some stuff right now. For this side of things, I've put together some PVC manifolds. So this one here splits the output of the large pump into four smaller ones that I can then send to the four groups of batteries that I'm going to have. The idea here is that up front, I'm going to have two sort of interlaced battery groups where I've got the two end, end plates, as well as two that are kind of in the middle. And then the other group is three plates where it's this plate, that plate, and that plate. So the longer plate has less, or the longer chain then has less work to do as far as cooling, which is fine since it'll have a little less flow due to the extra length. And then in the rear, I'm going to basically have each side be its own group. So there's the three plates on each side, and that'll each be fed from its own half-inch supply running along the underside of the car. 
for the input of the pumps, I've got this. So the bottom connects to the bottom of the radiator, and then this one connects to the big pump, that one connects to the little pump. I might have to add a bleeder screw or something on there to get it to fill up and the pumps to start working. I also need to extend the bottom a little bit so that this is vertically in line with that, and then find a piece of tubing that can bridge the gap between those two. I'll probably cut up something from another car and just see what AutoZone has sitting on the shelves in the back that has the right bend in it. So under here you can see the orange hole there, that's the bottom of the radiator, and then you can see the tubing here that I'm going to use to connect it back to the pumps. So this is just something I got off the shelf that has actually pretty much the perfect length and bend in it. So that goes all the way from there and then back up and then it goes up here. You can, the pumps are way out of focus because this is just terrible for filming, but that that's what connects that up. Another thing that's gone on is dad went ahead and mounted up the power steering pump that I got. So this is a power steering pump from a Mazda 3 of the same generation as the one that I have as my daily driver right now. The idea being that since it's got like CAN bus stuff that goes on, if I need to know more, I can always plug into my car and sniff out what messages are going on. It'll run and fail safe just fine, but I do want to eventually be able to actually have the proper control over it so that way it doesn't sit there running full blast on the highway or if I'm sitting there not turning the wheel just to save energy, make it quieter, and make the steering feel better. Um, so you can see, unfortunately, the stock tubing that connects it to the reservoir isn't quite the right size, so i got to find something else for that. Then here's the return line, and then the high-pressure supply comes out the back here somewhere. There it is, plugged up with a bit of paper towel. Um, so I'm going to have to get custom... A custom hydraulic line made for the high pressure output and then find something that'll work for the low pressure side. There are actually some power steering lines in the car that run right behind that panel. So you can kind of see there's the valve. It's got one, the high pressure supply goes around there and then loops around and connects to that which went onto the engine. And then the low pressure one goes up to this tank as well as these lines here that go to the power steering cooler in here, which is just a loop of tubing to keep that fluid from getting too hot. I don't really expect to need that since it's not going to be sitting behind a big hot engine exhaust or anything like it used to. Um, and there will be plenty of tubing length still connecting it up to the pump. That's what's going to supply my power steering eventually. Another thing I need to get going before the cooling system can be considered running is whether or not to make a separate pump controller module that just does the pumps, or whether to go ahead and incorporate it in with the rest of the dash cluster slash body computer module. I have to have something that'll drive all the different gauges and stuff and uh, give me the ability to, like, actually display what the status of the battery and all that is. So whether or not to combine that also with the pump controller is mostly just a matter of do I want to write the software for two different things or do I want to keep them separate so that way each one is a little bit easier to replace and design and all that. And obviously if I do two I have to duplicate a bunch of stuff like their power supply and all that. I'll probably put them both on the same thing but it's something I'm still not 100% set on. You may have noticed the windows being down in this piece of red 4-gauge running somewhere around the car and up in here. And what that's done is this connects into the fuse box here in the, uh, I believe the battery input, or maybe it's the... No, that goes into the alternator 120 amp fuse. And that goes all the way underneath this door, kind of where some of the other interior wiring is, and all the way here to the back. So the idea is I'm going to eventually mount the 12-volt battery here. You can see there's a ground strap that we used to get the car powered up, and that's what will run everything for battery power. 
and the black round plug here on the DC DC converter is where the 12 volts comes out so that's gonna have to run from there and then around into the back and I've got a couple of resettable thermal fuses that I can use to make sure each of those is protected another thing I need to consider soon is this fan it's pretty deep and maybe even pulls a lot more air than I need or possibly just newer ones can do the same thing but thinner uh, so it comes awfully close to interfering with the battery. I don't think it'll be a problem, but I need to make sure that once the battery box is built, this fan is going to have enough space for the air to actually leave it and then get directed to wherever it's going to exhaust from the car. The fan on this side, which is the AC fan, is a lot thinner, and I've heard people can just put this fan on both sides, or people will get another one of these slimmer fans and put it on both sides, and that works fine for the normal internal combustion motor. Um, and if so, it'll work fine for me since I produce a lot less heat. So that's all for now. Hopefully next time I'll have the cooling system plumbed up enough that I can actually put water in it. Once I put water in the cooling system and I can at least run the pumps under manual control, I'll be able to actually draw some power from the motor and that means I can actually drive it down the street, potentially, once once I have that and also get the brakes bled and tightened up. Get the tubing all tied down nice and tight. Uh, mount the gas pedal to the firewall and just bolt the seat down temporarily. That'll be good enough for a first drive, in a sense. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.